If you want the most out of your RV solar system, you need to make sure you're not doing a few key things that I see all the time in installations. So what we have here is a single panel. A lot of times when uh, RVs come from the factory, they will have a configuration that is just like this, right next to an air conditioner or a vent with a big housing on it, something that casts a large shadow. Anytime you shade a panel, you will dramatically reduce the amount of performance you're getting out of that panel. So it's imperative when you place your panels that you place them far enough away from any shade sources that you're not getting any of the shading on the cells. Covering even two or three of these square portions here will dramatically reduce it to the point of maybe 80 or 90% reduced output. So stay away from shading items. You'd usually think it would go without saying, but when you're installing something on the roof and you're screwing into the roof, like a solar panel, a vent, anything you have like that, the air conditioning units, you always have to seal the penetration that you've made into the roof. You'd be amazed how many times I've seen it where someone has installed their own solar panels and when you look at the feet, they look like this. Completely unsealed just screwed it on and left it. You are begging for water to get in and ruin your roof and probably be a $15,000 fix if you're lucky for insurance to cover it. If not, that one's gonna be on you from negligence. So be careful that you're not doing that. Always seal your feet. The proper way to seal the feet is to get some kind of self-leveling lap sealant like Dicor. That's a good brand that the factory uses. There's other brands out there. Dicor works good. Put a dab under the foot set the foot down, put your securing fastener in, and then you wanna go over the foot with the die core. Do not leave these feet unsealed or you will get roof damage. Parallel wiring configurations seem like they're the most popular um, amongst D P DIY people that are doing it themselves. A lot of times I think that's probably because all of the red wires go together, all the black wires go together. It makes it much more simple for people that don't do a lot of wiring or electrical work. Um, the problem with that, when you start wiring a lot of panels in parallel, your voltage is staying the same, which is fine, but your amperage is additive every panel that you put in parallel. So if you are, each panel is putting out 9 to 10 amps, every one you add is then 20, 30, 40 amps. And where that becomes an issue is the wiring that runs from your panels down to your charge controller is usually only... 12 to 10 gauge wire and usually only handles 30 to 40 amps. So you need to be careful how many panels you're setting up in parallel because that amperage is going to exceed the wire that you use to run down or at the very least it's going to push that wire towards its capability and build up resistance so that you're getting worse performance by the time your wire ends up at the charge controller to then use that power to charge your batteries. So make sure that when you're laying out your panels, you're not doing a straight parallel configuration. If you have any more than two panels, you probably wanna start doing them in series. The only problem that does bring up though is that you have to then add panels in pairs of two instead of just a single panel at a time. So if you're going more than three, you really should be doing a 2S 1P setup where you have two series panels and parallel those together to get that maximum output and make sure you're not taxing the wiring on your build setup down to your charge controller. I've set up here a 1200 watt array consisting of six 200 watt panels. So the configuration that you're gonna wire your panels in is extremely important when you're spanning this much of the roof and you're getting close to a few different shading items like we have here. So just like we talked about individual panels and getting the shade that's on the panels here, we obviously don't want that on a single panel because that takes away all of the power because that's the only panel. But a lot of times what people don't think about is putting panels in series connections. So this setup here is going to be what we call a 3S2P. So there'll be three series panels and then both banks of three will then be set in parallel. So what that means is the three series panels with one getting shaded like this, it actually knocks out the same amount of power that it knocks out on the one panel. It's going to knock out on the other two because they're wired in series. That shading one affects the others the exact same way. So you need to be very careful how you set up your panel configuration so that you don't have an issue where the sun in one position hits one panel and then the sun in another position is going to hit other panels. You want to reduce that as much as possible 
by putting them all in a line so that when shading does happen, because on an RV roof, it's almost inevitable that you're gonna get shading. But when it does happen, you don't want it from multiple angles. If you're parked in a certain direction and the sun comes up and shades this panel in the morning, this panel in the afternoon, you lost production for the entire day. If you're gonna lose production, make sure it's only on one side of an object. So if you were gonna have this, I would take this panel and swap it around and put it over here in line. When the sun comes up in the morning, we're gonna get some shading from this AC unit onto the one panel. But as soon as it comes up high enough, we're gonna clear this panel and it's gonna unlock the power from the entire section of that array. So make sure that when you're doing this, you're doing a series parallel configuration, keeping in mind that the series connection panels aren't being shaded in multiple directions as the sun travels.